Hello everybody and welcome to another guide and tutorial for the golden shot difficulty level is hard and I will give you six shots in how we destroy the Sequoia Creek hole number two now with the old hole location so this is not the same location that we did have in the recent big rig tournament but before we take a closer look make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications those of you that are looking to improve your game make sure to subscribe to any of our tour guide or tournament guide packages on patreon.com slash golf clash tommy it doesn't matter when you sign up during the month you will get access for 30 days of content again link is in the description down below Low. Alrighty then, let's take a look at Sequoia Creek hole number two. One of, um, I'm not gonna say my, it's not my favorite par three, but one off. I do enjoy this rough bump in particular, but the problem we do have here on this par three is that we can't play the rough bump in any, in all the wind angles, because if we do have more tailwind, then we're gonna pull into min club, and then we're gonna you know then we're gonna have to go with a decent amount of overpower or we're just going to miss the rough and that's not something i want to do so we do have two landing positions for you all and that's going to be one for tailwind and for crosswind and it's gonna be one for a headwind alone where i would say the one that will give us the best success overall that's going to be the the headwind one because we're going to play uh rough bump when it comes to the hole in one we do have the obsidian chest we do have amber chest for the yellow ring and crimson chest for the red ring uh, aqua chest for the light blue ring and then cobalt chest for the dark blue ring press the question mark on the top right if you do want to get to the frequently asked questions and if there is anything else you want help with or there's something that you don't understand then you can always send in a ticket by pressing that bubble uh, like the talk bubble on the top right there and sending a ticket to the golf clash support and i understand that it's not gonna it's not called a talk bubble but that's kind of my swingish way of explaining all right here we do have the landing position in uh, tailwind and the crosswind and the easy thing with this one is that it's an nmt what does nmt mean it means no move target so when we are doing this setup this is the easiest one because you don't have to touch the target until it's time to adjust the range so what you do is that you immediately uh, look at the wind angle and then put the spins that you believe would be accurate then you adjust and you take your shot so here you don't have to fiddle around trying to look for uh, a different uh, spot with the i mean uh, with the blue ring by the rough or you know as an example so this is very simple so no move target for crosswind and for tailwind but when it comes to the headwind one here we're gonna take a look at the rough bump which the landing spot is a little bit di uh, more difficult and i'm trying to do my best here to um to visualize where we want to be we do want to be just by the very edge of the rough just before it shows we bounce on the fairway after the rough and this is before spin where we do look at the tip of the ball guideline to be just by the divide so in between the dark and the bright green square row and you can also see that that line is aligned with out with the right side of the red ring so if you do still have the red ring um, and you haven't got it yet then you can also use that as a reference if you have already gotten the red ring then that's a non-existent reference so but something to, to have in mind and this play is only in headwind because when we do play a rough bump in a crosswind or a tailwind we're going to adjust on to different height which means that the more up you adjust the more the ball is going to fly and that's going to be very difficult to uh, to uh, compensate for and you need to be having a lot of experience to be able to do so and i'm not saying that you that are watching here does not have that experience it's just that it's going to be a cause of missing and that's going to be uh just stupid of us to actually design a play like that uh, where we do have a bigger risk of missing the rough and the hence not getting a chest with our face shot because in the end that's what we do want to get we do want to have a chest and here if you do hit the perfect ball 
and have done everything correct we can always guarantee i've read the chest with a perfect ball on this golden shot but then there's all sort of things such as pull angles and ball centering and everything like that but enough talks about that let's take a look at the videos here now we start with an nmt you can see i'm not touching the target until it's time to adjust my range so i start by adding a backspin and i'm also adding a left spin you can see here that i'm adding approximately 0 0.2 left spin and to be fair though, I play with a slight 59 on my pull angle, which pulls me a little bit more left than intended. Adjustment is always going to be over the bullseye. And when it comes to the VPR tables, you can see there on the right hand side, the green is the one we are following in tailwind and crosswind. And red is what we follow if we do the rough bump. We bounce nicely, you can see it's a super simple one and this would have been the yellow ring if we would have still had that one there. And a little bit left, I mean this is a tough one when it comes to the NMT but a super simple chest to get. Getting some berserkers as uh, which becomes more and more important I would say especially if you do play pro and expert getting uh, having some berserkers is is very important as we do have very few to be won in tournaments. Now, playing this one with 3.8 backspin and half a bar of uh, right spin, we're going to have 5.7 miles per hour. You can see we follow the green ones, and I'm adjusting over the bullseye, pulling a 3.1 rings. Center the ball, which always is difficult, especially here when it is a bit right, and try to hit perfect. Now you can see here now with the crosswind with the tailwind this landing spot is super simple to find but it's going to be the tougher one to get a hole in one with because there are more moving parts in terms of when we bounce on the fairway it's a pretty long bounce until it hits the ground to the second bounce and then obviously the third bounce and everything like that will have to be correct so but if we do have a headwind we're gonna play a rough bump and the rough bump gives us a much better chance but the landing spot is more difficult so you can see here that i'm moving up so I see the uh, first bounce on the fairway, then I move it back. And then I'm looking to have the tip to uh, tip of the ball guideline, as already explained, uh, aligned with uh, in between the dark and the bright green square row. 2.9 backspin and a little bit of right spin is what I'm using here. This is 6 miles per hour, and now we're following the red numbers on the right. We have 4 rings, and we pull over bullseye. Always in headwind, we, I do recommend that when you center the ball that you try to just have the bottom of the ball to rest by the bottom arrow, which is called, which is one tick of overpower. And the reason I want you to do that one tick of overpower, oh my god, look, look, how could that not fall in? The reason I want you to do one tick of overpower is to just land in a better place in, in the rough and make sure that we are actually hitting the rough, especially in the stronger headwinds. Oh my God, that was super close. <laughs> All right, now that was a southeast east wind. Now we do have a slight southwest, and you can see I'm moving up, so it bounces like that, and I'm moving back to find the right position. And now the time to add the spins, and we're using 2.8 backspin, 0.8 right spin, 5.9 miles per hour. Here I'm going to pull four rings, so and also over the bullseye. As always, I mean, when you're following shots by me, I'm always pulling over the bullseye. I think that's the easiest way to, to make sure to be consistent. And we're then going to center the ball, and we're going to use the one tick of OP, a one click of OP. And we're gonna bounce into the rough it rolls down a, l a little bit too much i mean a hair too much right spin oh my god this like it's really uh, the game is messing with us here but getting the crimson chest though and then we do have a final shot for you all and the importance for me here now and i'm gonna try to apply that whenever we do have the golden shot in the future is to always try to find shots even though it's not uh uh, not to say, uh, even though it's not a hole in one with specific shots, I do want to try to provide with different wind angles, as that has been suggested by others. And then it's better to show different type of angles in videos instead of showing just hole in one, like three hole in ones with the same angle. 
So now we do have more or less a direct headwind. It's a little bit southeast, but more or less direct headwind. 5.7, 3.9, pulling over the bullseye, spins is applied, center the ball and hit perfect. And once again, the rough bump is definitely going to be uh, the best chance for you to make an hole in one, at least on a consistent basis, it's going to be close. So it rolls down the green and it comes in with a lovely speed, dead center for an hole in one here to end with. So let's see what we do get in the chest. Obviously, the nine burst circuits is a very vel welcome addition uh, for the general player. And uh, we're gonna see here now after this that we're gonna open up and take a look at the text guide. And as always, when it comes to the text guides, my friend, it's made by Tony Richardson uh, based on my shots and my shots alone. And this here, as you see, it's a two piece, which is very common, especially on the kind of newer courses. We do have on the left everything in green, no move target, so don't touch the target until it's time to adjust the rings. We do have the VPR table on the bottom left, and then we do have the spins. 4.2 backspin, no side spin, and direct tailwind. Northeast wind, 4 backspin, half a bar of left spin. Wind coming right to left with tailwind, 3.8 backspin, 0.8 right spin. Wind coming right to left with crosswind. 3.2 backspin and 1.5 right spin. Wind coming left to right with crosswind, 3.2 backspin and 1.2 left spin. Then we move over to the right side. There we do play with a driver and we do a rough bump. Bullseye just before fringe with ball guideline tip in between dark and light green square row. VPR table on the bottom right and this, uh, the spins that we're using is in direct headwind, 2.5 backspin, half a bar right spin. When it comes to wind coming right to left with headwind, 2.8 backspin, 0.8 right spin. And wind coming right to left with, uh, sorry, left to right with headwind, 2.8 backspin, 0.3 right side spin. So there we do have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this golden shot. Did you have any success? And as always, make sure to subscribe to the best guides on the market on patreon.com slash golf clash Tommy, especially now when the nine hole cup is coming up as well, where we obviously will be making a guide. So make sure to sign up, link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck in your golf clash game.